If you have a lot of money in the bank and you leave it in the bank, the problem is, is your bank accounts could be frozen. Good day, my name is David Fusco. And in this show, I'm gonna talk about business, finance, and how to survive and thrive in this crazy environment that we're living in today. Welcome to my show. Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is David Fusco. Uh, today is May 3rd, 2023. Uh, the year is moving along quickly, thank God, um, in certain respects. Um, and we can see <clears throat> our challenges right now in the monetary system in the United States, as well as the world. And I've been talking about that lately because it's paramount um, as to what's going on. And it's affecting, and it will affect everyone. Our current monetary system, if you look at the banks and what's happening there, is you're starting to get another bunch of bank failures, which is reminiscent of the many other times that our system has gone through bank failures. And we're facing another one. We've already had two or three very large banks fail. Federal government jumped in and bailed them out 100% at this point. Uh, but that's not sustainable. And at some point, the, the, the hammer is going to come down. Uh, for those who are paying attention um, and those who are not, now you're going to learn that we are marching our way towards what's called a central bank digital currency, or they shorten it, calling it a CBCD, central bank uh, digital currency, CBDC, sorry. And um, which means... It's going to be digital money only, no paper money. And it's going to be able to be documented, tracked, and traced every single transaction that you make. But let me give you a little history of money and give you some ideas what to do. So our current original monetary system, and I, I know we've already talked about this, but it, it, it bears uh, hearing again, especially for those if you've not really heard it enough to have it in memory. Our current monetary system, very different than it was at the very inception of the United States. Initially, the United States was to create money only based on gold and silver. And it defined in the Constitution the amount of gold and silver that equaled the dollar. And that system stayed the same until 1878 when they pulled silver out of the money system officially, although it still stayed in the coinage until 1964. And at that point, there was no more silver in the money system. Gold stayed in the money system a bit longer. Um, it was fully in the money system until 1933, at what time the United States changed the value of gold from about $20.66 per ounce to uh, $35 an ounce. They had the U.S. citizens return all their gold coins, and they would have the citizens at that point just be handed paper notes, just like we carry around today. What we carry around today are called Federal Reserve notes. And if you know the definition of words, a note is a debt instrument. So we actually carry around pieces of debt. These green notes that we carry are actually debt instruments to the Federal Reserve Bank, which is a private corporation. These are beyond our pay grade, so to speak, and there's nothing we can do. We're just kind of forced to use the system. And how they force you is, is you must use these Federal Reserve notes to pay your debts and your taxes. So we're locked into that system. But that system is changing. And with the central bank digital currency, who knows what's going to actually happen. There are things that you can do to protect yourself, though, and we'll go over that in a little bit. Just wanted to give you a little short history of, of the money system. And our original money system was based off of the Spanish money. And in the 1500s, the Spaniards came here en masse, and they would mine and gold and silver. This is a, believe it or not, this is actually a um, Spanish uh, um, real, and or also known as pieces of eight. This was from the 1500s. I believe it was made in Peru. Um, and you could see they really didn't care what it looked like. They just wanted to get the certain weight and they would just cut pieces off until it reached the appro appropriate, uh, proper weight. 
Uh, then as time went on, they made things a little fancier and they created nicer, prettier ones. This one's from 1809 and this one here is from 1786. And if you notice on this coin here, there's these little impressions. If you could, I don't know if you guys can see it, but you'll see little impressions with different symbols on them. And these are called chop marks. And what would happen is a merchant would take a little tap and die and with the proper amount of pressure, he would tap on it. And if his die made an impression on the coin, he knew it was silver. If it was too hard, it would not make the impression. And the different impressions were from different merchants that this coin passed through. It's amazing if you think about this uh, 200 plus year old coin, how many hands it's gone through. So this is what our money system per the constitution was based on silver and also gold. And this is a um, gold Spanish coin. This is a, um, a real. Um, again, similar, you know, was used in the United States. This coin was from uh, 1787. And again, it's pretty amazing if you think about the history of how this coin's floated around for years. And what's interesting is, is if you had paper money from the 17 or 1800s from Spain, if it still was not rotted away, you'd have nothing. But if you had silver and gold, you would still have something of value that you could turn into currency in today's world. So the United States originally had gold coins. This is a $20 gold piece. Uh, this is from pre-1933. And this coin today is over $2,000 slightly. Um, it has slightly less than one ounce. And the coin um, was taken out of circulation other than for collectors um, in 1933 from the hands of the people. And it was just in the hands of the bankers, uh, investors that were overseas. And that's how we still have them around, probably a lot of them. And people who decided not to turn them in. And you were allowed to keep a small amount um, but nonetheless, in 1933, you had to return these and you were handed a $20 piece of paper. That $20 piece of paper is worth pretty much not all that much today. But this $20 gold coin is over $2,000. Um, this Whoops. Uh, all right, well, these are, uh, they're in, in little encasements, but this is a half ounce modern gold coin. And they just, uh, they kind of like try to make it look similar to the old coins, but this is modern gold and it's really just for investment purposes to hold. Now, a lot of people can't really afford gold at $2,000 an ounce, but if you can, it's not a bad idea to have. But this, I think, is the most interesting because we can really relate to this. Everyone knows what this is. These are quarters, 25 cent pieces, four quarters. That's one dollar. And really not much you can get with a dollar. I don't even know if there's, uh, I guess you can get a couple of minutes on the parking meter for a quarter, maybe one spin on the bubble gum machine. And 1964 was the last time they had silver. And this is a, these are, you can hear the difference maybe versus the modern ones. I don't know if you can or can't. Let me not mix them up. And it's really hard to mix up ultimately. If you look at the rims, I don't know if you guys can see it in there. You can see there's copper in the rim. And if you look at the silver coins, you can see there's no copper in the rim. And also, as soon as you touch it and feel it, the silver coin has a silky feel to it. The modern coins, not really at all. Kind of dull feeling, actually. It actually has a nice feel, as insane as that might sound. But in 1964, a gallon of gas, 1965, was 25 cents. In 1964, it was a silver coin. 1965, it was made out of base metals. And if you were to have a 1964 quarter and you turned it into current currency levels, 
Uh, you would get uh, right now silver is around twenty five dollars, twenty five forty four a spot. Uh, the melt value of that is four dollars and sixty cents. You actually get more than a gallon of gas for that. If you had a nineteen sixty five quarter or later, you would get one spin on that bubble gum machine, like I said. So there's a big difference between the old money and the new money. What's ha- what's interesting is is it's, it, the money's getting less and less value. I mean, you can go to the stores nowadays and pretty much week to week and you can see the difference. So what do we do? You know, we have to live in the monetary system that we're in. If you have a lot of money in the bank and you leave it in the bank, the problem is, is your bank accounts could be frozen. And even if you're well under the FDIC limits, your money still could be frozen and locked up for up to five years. And that's how long they have to give you the money back. Will they give it back sooner? Who knows? But there's no payment schedule. It's just a matter of you get it when you get it. And if you haven't noticed over the years, they just change the rules to fit their needs, kind of like the kings of old. And uh, you almost feel like we're going back into a serfdom type system. So what do you do? That's one thing you do is you can you can buy gold and silver. Okay, that's the old Spanish gold money. That's a uh, less modern, that's a uh, 1930 gold coin. And these are modern gold coins from the United States. There are other countries and there's just regular bullion. But it's, in my opinion, you're better off getting um, gold and silver that are from a, uh, created by a nation, at least you could feel more confident and make sure you buy from reputable dealers. Uh, another thing you could do if you have large amounts of money and you just can't have everything in gold and silver. And also before I forget, when I say gold and silver, I mean the physical stuff in your hands. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. What was that expression? Possession is nine tenths of the law. So if you don't hold this in your hand, you just have a, a claim on it. And if the place that's holding it for you goes under and it wasn't, and everything wasn't swiped from the uh, guards watching the place, you've got nothing. If it's in your possession, it's yours. Uh, okay, what about the money in the bank? Well, the money in the bank, you need to secure it. If you leave it in one bank, you've got a problem if that one bank fails. Of course, you could break it up into multiple banks. Some in the bigger banks, some in the smaller banks, whatever the case might be. Uh, but in my opinion, the money that you don't need for day-to-day operations and, and living, you should try to move to the most secure location in U.S. dollar form, and that's the treasury. And you don't want to own the treasury bills through a bank or a brokerage firm because, again, there's a layer between you and the uh, money itself. If you go online to treasurydirect.gov, you can easily set up an account for yourself as an individual. You can set up an account if you were a corporation, an LLC, or any other form of business or trust. And you can invest that money sitting there. Uh, The short-term treasury bills are the ones I would recommend. This way, as the interest rates rise and fall, your interest rate will rise and fall with the treasury bills, but you're not going to lock yourself into a long-term debt situation where you potentially could lose a lot of principal. And that's the name of the game is to to hold on to what you have and keep as much value in what you have. Um, It could be any day. It could be years from now. But the system is changing. You hear the talk. They're building up the rhetoric. Um, I personally believe a lot of the turmoil and commotion caused by... uh, creating distractions uh, and division of the people is also to keep us distracted, you know, like the the Wizard of Oz movie, if everyone, anyone's remembered watching that, where you had the man behind the curtain and he was making all these loud noises and very scary looking. But meanwhile, it was just some guy pulling the strings somewhere. And that's kind of like the system we have. There's some guy pulling the strings and you got to be cautious and careful as best you can. So that's really just wanted to get another little video out. It's a repeat of something I've done before, but I really feel it's very important that you pay attention to what you have, get an accounting of what you have, where it is, and build your community uh, together. 
So appreciate it. Thank you, and uh, good luck to all of you.